Hi and welcome to Axis Design. Whether you've just bought Anima or you're trying out the free trial, this short tutorial will help you get up and running in next to no time. We'll show you how to install and license the software and plugins and introduce you to the Anima interface. Finally, we'll quickly illustrate how easy it is to import animations into 3D Studio Max and Cinema 4D. To install Anima, download the most recent installer from the Axis website. If you've purchased Anima or have been automatically upgraded from Anima 1, you'll find your installation files by going to your account. Just click on the padlock to the right hand side of the website to log in, then go to My Account and the Anima installation files can be found in the available download section. Or if you're not yet an Anima user and you'd like to try out the light version, to get your files simply go to the Anima product page and click Download Now to add Anima to your basket. Once you've downloaded the file, unzip it and launch the Anima installer by double clicking the executable file and you'll be shown the welcome screen. Click Next and review the license agreement. If you agree with its terms, just click I agree. Next, you can choose the components you'd like to install. Make sure full version is selected to install the commercial edition or the free trial. Alternatively, if you're installing a render node, pick this option instead. The installer automatically detects versions of 3D Studio Max and Cinema 4D installed on your system and adds the appropriate plugins. Check these are correct and click Next to choose the directory where you'd like Anima to be installed. If you'd like to change the default installation path, click Browse to select a new location. Otherwise, simply accept the suggestion and click Install to get started. A window will display showing the software components being installed and a progress bar. You'll receive notification when the installation is completed. If you'd like to run Anima 2 immediately, then make sure Launch Anima 2 is selected and click Finish to close the installer. When you launch Anima for the first time, it will start in a free trial mode with a few limitations. This is great if you want to try out the software or for simple projects. If, however, you've purchased a license, then please follow these steps to register your software and unlock the full feature set. Installing Anima Standalone and Anima Render Nodes is slightly different, so we'll tackle each one separately. To license both versions, you'll need to know your order purchase code and the email address used to place the order. This information will be emailed to you and is also available from the Recent Orders section of your account page. With this information to hand, please make sure you have an active internet connection and launch Anima. If your production environment doesn't allow you to have internet access, just contact us and we can send you an offline license code and further instructions. Otherwise, go to Main Menu, then Help, then License to open the licensing window. Here, you'll need to enter your order purchase code, the email address used to place the order, and then click Save. To complete the licensing process, you'll need to close and restart Anima, and that's it. Your product should now be licensed and ready to use. A standard Anima license comes with three render nodes in addition to the fully interactive version. To license these, just run the render node edition of Anima and the license window will open automatically. Enter your order purchase code. For render nodes, you'll notice these codes are prefixed with a letter. Enter the email address used to place the order and click Save, then close and restart Anima and your Render Node edition of Anima will now be licensed. So now that Anima is installed and licensed, let's take a few minutes to introduce the interface. We'll talk about all the features in much more depth in the next tutorials, but here's a quick overview to help new users find their bearings. When you open Anima, you'll be presented with the Welcome screen which gives you instant access to your recent projects and scenes. In addition, it allows you to create new projects, manage existing ones, and provides easy access to demo files, tutorials, and our support channels to help you get the most from your software. For now, we'll open a demo scene to illustrate the rest of the interface. Anima's interface is designed to guide you through the process of creating complex animations in as little time as possible. To do this, it separates the creation process into two modes. First of these is drawing mode, which is the default when Anima starts. Using this interface, you can design, organize, and render your animations. The drawing view is arranged into logical panels to help you focus on different aspects of your work, such as assigning actors, applying motion clips, creating areas and paths, editing properties, and managing your project. In the center of this interface is a 3D viewport. Here, you can see a real-time preview of your animation project. It also enables you to draw walkways, create areas, place escalators and stairs, move actors, assign motion clips, adjust poses, and much, much more. 
To navigate the viewports, you can find tools at the top of the screen or use Alt plus left mouse button to orbit, Alt plus right mouse button to pan, and Alt plus left mouse button and right mouse button or the scroll wheel to zoom. On the left, you'll find the tools needed to create and edit walkways. Below this is the time bar, which contains all the controls you need to play your animation and set the scene's duration, frame rate and playback speed. This interface can also be used to create and export preview renders. Moving to the left side, you have the Objects Library. This contains system-wide and user-defined area presets. To use them, you simply drag them from the panel onto the 3D viewport to quickly populate scenes. Below this, you'll find the Actors Library, which contains a list of all the characters available in the current project. To use this, you can drag them onto characters in the 3D viewport or add them to the crowd field in the properties panel to assign characters to areas or pathways. Mm -hmm. The final panel on the left hand side is the motion clips library. This contains a list of all the motion clips and categories available in the current project. Just like the characters, you drag these onto the motion clip or category property of an area to assign the animation to all characters or to assign them to an individual character, you drag it to the actor clip properties. You can even assign a motion clip to a specific path section in the 3D viewport, so that characters moving through that area adopt that animation. Starting at the bottom on the right, we have the properties window that allows you to edit the parameters for the currently selected object. This panel is dynamic and its contents change depending on the type of object selected, as you can see as I change between an actor and a walkway. Continuing upwards, we find the project window this shows a hierarchical view of all the areas and actors in your scene and gives you an at-a-glance understanding of the project. From here, you can create, select and edit all the elements in the animation. Finally, on the right-hand side, there's the Mode window. This is used to toggle on and off the other panels and allows you to switch the workspace between drawing and editing modes. Let's click this to change to Editing Mode, which is used to fine-tune actors' poses, import new characters and motion clips, organise content, create colour variations and much more. On the left-hand side, you'll find the same actor and motion clip libraries that list all the assets available in the current project and allow you to import additional models and motions. When you select an asset in one of these panels, its information, categories and tags show in the panels on the right-hand side. Here you'll find the Actor or Clip Information panel that displays settings for the currently selected actor or motion clip. And below this are the tags and categories that help you to organise your resources and allow the system to match the correct motion clips to the characters. You'll notice in this mode that the 3D view is divided vertically. On the left is the Preview window that displays the combination of character and motion selected. Any edits to the pose or textures are updated live in this window. On the right hand side is the Pose Editor that can be used to adjust the actor's pose for the currently selected motion clip. What we've been looking at so far is the default layout, but Anima is actually designed to be able to be flexible enough to fit into your way of working. The interface can be freely adapted by enabling and disabling panels and changing the layout and size. As we've seen, we can turn panels on and off using the mode panel, but you can also close panels by clicking the X button found in the right hand corner. Panels can be resized by dragging the top or bottom, or to resize the whole column, drag the sides. They can be moved around too. To do this, click and drag on the title bar and valid areas that the panel can be docked to will be highlighted in yellow. Drag in between other panels to change their order, or drag on top of another panel to create a tabbed group. You can also create floating tools by tearing off panels and releasing them onto an empty part of the screen, or clicking the detach button in the top right hand corner. This is ideal for users with multiple monitors, as it lets you place the panels on one monitor and maximise the 3D viewport on another. Finally, if you want to go back to the default layout, just go to the main menu, select Workspaces, then Default Layout. That covers our quick overview of the Anima interface. Now let's take a look at the plugins, starting with 3D Studio Max. To import an Anima project into 3D Studio Max, it couldn't be easier. Go to File menu and click on Import. Then under File Type, select Anima Project. Browse to the location of your Anima project, select it and click OK to start the import process. After a little while, the Select Scene menu opens with a drop-down list showing all the available Anima scenes contained in the selected project. Choose the scene you wish to load and click Select. Next, the Material Adapter window opens. 
This automatically detects and creates photorealistic materials for your current renderer, but also allows you to select from alternative options like plaster or semi-opaque materials for stylized results. To load photoreal materials for the current renderer, just leave the settings on regular configuration and click Apply Materials to import the anima scene and that's all there is to it. Now we have our scene imported, there are a few settings that can be modified directly in 3D Studio Max. To access them, you'll need to select the Anima Scene controller. This is represented in the viewports by a symbol in the form of the Anima logo. If you select this and open the Modify panel, you'll have access to some important settings. Starting at the top, you have the Anima project, which can be changed at any point by clicking on the ellipsis and restarting the import process. Alternatively, to load a different scene from the same project, click the Reload button, which opens the Select Scene window. You should also use this to update the scene after making changes to it in Anima Standalone. Rebuild Material opens the Material Adapter window, allowing you to regenerate the materials, which is useful if you change to a different renderer, or if you'd like to swap the photoreal materials for one of the alternative options. To select all of the actors associated with this controller, click the Select Actors button. You can also optimise the scene by controlling the number of characters that will display in full mesh mode. If there are more characters in the scene than this value, then the additional characters display only as a simplified arrow to help keep viewport playback responsive. Don't worry though, this only affects the viewport, not the render. From here, you can also display or hide the textures in the viewports. If you want to create some special effects, you can use the playback speed controls. Use values of less than 100% to playback animations in slow motion, or greater than 100% to speed them up. Finally, there's the Time Offset control, which moves the start and end point of the animation. This is handy if you need to delay the point at which the animation starts playing, because there are other events that need to occur first. Cinema 4D's plugin functionality is nearly identical, and the import process is only slightly different. To import an Anima scene into Cinema 4D, you go to the Plugins menu, click on Anima 2 Scene, then browse to the location of your Anima project. Click Open, and the same Select Scene menu opens with a drop-down list showing you all the available Anima scenes in the project. Choose the one you wish to load, and click Select. Cinema 4D also uses an Anima Scene controller to manage characters. Here though, it's not visible in the viewport, but is selected when you click any character. To find the settings, go to the Attribute Manager, and select the Object tab. You'll find all the same settings we just demonstrated in 3D Studio Max. Thanks for watching this introduction. We hope it helps you to get up and running with Anima and find your way around the interfaces. In the next tutorials, we'll look in a lot more depth at many of the tools and features available to help you create impressive character animation.